Right, so this evening we're on our way to our quarterly Youth Work Toolbox full staff meeting. And what we usually do is we meet up every every 12 weeks just to catch up with the team. We're a virtual company, so a lot of what we do is online. We have weekly Google Hangout meetings, we have Skype chats, but we don't usually or regularly get the opportunity to sit down with the staff on a face-to-face -face basis. So what we do is every quarter we'll book a venue, get all the staff in the building and just talk about some key issues, update the staff on what's happening, um, look at the staffing rota, any developments and things like that. So we're just about to go and handle the business and we're bringing you with us. So we'll see you inside. Previously what would happen is you'd have two youth workers going out with one or two police officers, so just one team going out yeah. and doing the project, where um, that went on for about 12 to 18 months, it was reassessed and the partnership wanted to hit more, more areas in one night, so it was a case of getting okay, the teams in. So you've now got one officer and one police officer. Sorry, one officer and one youth worker going out in one car and another officer and going out in another car. And because it's, it's a massive area, the area is huge, so one will go to the north, one will go to the south. Yeah. Now initially there was some resistance, which I'm, I'm conscious of. So for example, let's say it's your first night on, so and you do a few to insurance but you've never done it before, and you just suddenly go to the police station, meet the police officer for the first time, and off you go. You've now got to learn the ropes just on the fly here. Yeah. Where previously it was the case of you work alongside Noel or Matt, who's been doing it for the past six months. Yeah. You'd have someone who is more experienced and you can kind of shadow and turn yeah. the background a little bit yeah. just to get a feel. That, that opportunity is gone now. Unless we're going to pay someone additional and have two members of staff on each, where they're not paying us for that. So it's like we would have to we would have to front that cost. You see what I mean? They're only paying for two youth workers per night. If you wanted to have a shadowing opportunity, you'd have to pay an additional two youth workers. You see what I mean? So you've got now got four rather than two. So we've just finished our staff meeting and it overrun as usual. We've always got something else to say, but we've covered a lot. Um, we've got our summer staffing rotor totally filled. They were fighting over shifts and we've got the key messages sent out to the team as well. So it was good. I always enjoy getting together with the team. Obviously as a virtual company, we don't see each other that often, but like I said, on a, on a quarterly basis, we do want to get around a table and see each other face to face. Not everyone was able to make it. We had a few staff members not here, but we got the business done, so it's all good, I'm happy. One thing that becomes really apparent at the staff meetings, the face to face staff meetings, is the, the implementation of all the planning, all the thinking, all the strategizing. <laughs> The, the development of new processes and procedures. When we implement that at those meetings and you can see the response from the team like, yeah, that makes sense, yeah, that's gonna work. You know, it kinda, it gives me that buzz, like this is, it's, it's worth it, it's, it's working, um, it's worthwhile. You know, there's times where, you know, we don't see each other for, for 12 weeks um, and I'm just on the grind like thinking about okay how can we improve the 
the timesheet process, how can we improve the um, the data capture and monitoring and recording procedure, how can we improve that and I'm constantly working on improving those systems and those processes behind the scenes and it's, it's at these quarterly meetings where we introduce it to the staff and we give them a run through and you know let them kind of see how it's going to work and to see that light bulb like yeah 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 I like that that's going to work I like that so that's one thing that really comes apparent at those meetings Markets, you have to check out the the clearance shelf. See if you can grab a bargain. Let's have a look. Get some cat food. I got cats, but it's a bargain. I've got some nail varnish. A good old clearance clearance shelf. Look at the price of this. So, gluten-free cereal. Three pounds for this little piece of box. Got some other boxes. What else we got? Gluten-free rice krispies. Look at the size of that box. It's tiny. It's three pound. Being gluten-free is an expensive habit. It's hard to maintain. Look at these little chocolate bars. Look at the size as big as my finger. Look at that. Like 75 pence. Dear me. What else we got? Now these, these are some serious biscuits. I would pay 180 for those. How many did you get in here? Let's have a look. There's probably about four in there. It doesn't tell you. You're joking. One biscuit. There could never be one biscuit. There could never be one biscuit in here. There's more than one. Maybe like saying like one biscuit. Oh yeah, that, that's how <laughs> that's how much I was gonna say if we said there's one biscuit in here. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised though, the price of gluten-free food, I wouldn't be surprised if they charge you one pound eighty for one biscuit. I would not be surprised. But it still doesn't tell you how many is in here, there's probably about six. But those are actually cheaper than the ones in Asda and Tesco. Did you, did you pick up a box? No, because that's a Yeah, these ones, triple chocolate cookies. Stick some of those in there. Gluten-free bread. Gluten-free bread is not very nice. You see, gluten-free flour. Gluten-free flour is actually sand. It's whitened sand, <laughs> believe me. This stuff here, if you ever make any biscuits, any, Fried dumplings, gluten-free flour and fried dumplings does not work. <laughs> Don't make them. It's like you, you put it in your mouth and it just all just disintegrates into sand. It's horrible. Okay, so look at the difference here. You've got regular, regular no-name Rice Krispies for £1.70. You've got gluten-free Rice Krispies for £2.50. The struggle is real. The struggle is very real. What else? At least they're nice though. The gluten-free Rice Krispies, they're nice. We got to, we got to Nestle. Actually, I might get shot down for that. I'm sure Nestle's done some bad stuff in the past. So I'm not promoting Nestle, but the gluten-free Rice Krispies are nice. What about the... Yeah, these ones are nice as well. Actually, no, they're not nice. They're all right. Mm, they're the best. Gluten free, and again look at the price, so you've got 
some no name Polynock cornflakes for 95 pence for one pound ninety five. Look at these four pounds. Four pounds for cereal. And then the gluten free ones, two pound twenty. Those ones, those ones are palatable. So gluten free polynock cornflakes are palatable, just about. The rest of them, sugar. we need sugar. 